Welcome to the eighth annual Mosaic International South Asian Film Festival, the digital edition. My name is Anya McKenzie, and I am the CCAI Board Advisory for MISAF. The festival director, as you all have seen, is Arshad Khan. He is also involved online and actively um, pushing this festival. So we congratulate Arshad as well. With me today is the lovely Shala Khan, who is uh, Associate Programmer at MISAF and really involved in the features programming this year. So welcome, Shala. Thank you. Nice to be yeah. here. Excellent. And we are so delighted to have a very, very special guest with us on Facebook Live, apparently her first time ever. Um, with us is, is Sonia Nasri Cole, who is the outstanding filmmaker of the feature film I Am You, which is premiering at MISAF this year online on our platform with TIFF. And so we're so delighted to have Sonia here to um, talk to us about the film. Um, a few words about uh, this magnificent filmmaker. And uh, she has quite the outstanding bio. I couldn't even begin to capture it all. But the things that stood out for me were um, that she wrote a letter to Ronald Reagan when she was 17. Um, to talk to him about the situation in Afghanistan that so disturbed her. She then became uh, involved in activism, human rights work, and um, leveraging filmmaking as the main vehicle for her to tell stories and to affect change. And so uh, has made the film Breadwinner, which you might be familiar with, that played in Canada. Also a film called Black Tulip and I Am You Now, um, has written several books. And I'm sure the list goes on, but Sonia, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be a part of this amazing festival. You guys are doing incredible work and really putting a light on films that matters. So I am truly honored to be a part of it. Wow, well, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in on, about the film. I know that uh, Shallow first watched the film and was a little bit blown away. And then it was like, can I can I get a second opinion? So then I watched the film and then I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know. Um, okay, so Shala, do you have a question that you wanna jump in on? Yeah, I was, okay, the why I was blown away was because A, I'm from Pakistan. I have faced situations when I moved here eight years ago, similar to that where I worked for broadcasting and we were under fire. Uh, by a lot of militants and, you know, I've lived through it. But what also resonated was not just, but even a migrant story, right? Like you immigrate and what pains you go through to get a better life. And I was so happy with the ending that he, I will not give the ending, but I was happy with the ending <laughs> of the film. <laughs> yeah, I was. But I was also sad. Uh, that's why I asked Anya to jump in. There is a point, and Sona, you know that. Uh, uh, and I'm talking about the vehicle and the German police and what they find there. And that saddened me. But I wanted to know because you obviously you're writing from experience. You've experienced it and have and you filmed this again in Afghanistan. The actors and actresses um, uh, are from Afghanistan. How difficult was it to go back and film? Has it changed from when you filmed Black Tulip and uh, like, has it changed for the better? Is, is it better now or still the same? And like, how was your experience? That is um, the saddest part. Mm -hmm. It's not better, it's actually worse. Because in 2011, when finally, you know, the United States was in Afghanistan and uh, we, there was a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. today we're pulling out of Afghanistan and we're negotiating with the Taliban, the enemy of Afghanistan, and calling it peace talk in Qatar and totally ignoring the government of Afghanistan that wants nothing to do with it. So it's actually darker than it was before because now, who are you gonna call? You know, everybody's leaving. Mm -hmm. And especially for women of Afghanistan, it's very scary because as you both know from coming from my part of the world, the suffering that the women went through and the tyranny of the Taliban that eight years and still suffering 
getting raped, getting tortured, getting their uh, breasts cut off, getting their lips cut off. There is a lot of atrocity against women. Uh, and women of Afghanistan, as you all know, we had our liberation before American women even knew what equality of right was. So the country went literally like 300 years backward. That's harder as a, a society to accept. When you never had freedoms, you have nothing to compare it with. But when you had it all, when women were wearing mini dresses, short sleeve dresses, high heels walking on the streets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was a society, there was restaurants, there were nightclubs, there was cinemas, there was theater, all of a sudden everything gets shut down on you. And there is young girls in Afghanistan that are for 40 years, they know nothing but war. Just imagine how they're feeling. You're trying to explain to them like my mother's photos I show to them and they're like, this is Afghanistan. They just cannot believe that we were sophisticated like that, mm -hmm. that we had a nightclub called Marco Polo mm -hmm. and people were dancing there doing yeah. the twist. It just changed in such a horrific way. And it's, it's, a, it's very sad what's happening. I think this generation is going to pay an entire price for it. Right. But Afghanistan has to be free and have to find their own peace within themselves uh, because the United States could not accomplish that. If they wanted to, really wanted to, they could have get, gotten rid of the Taliban very fast. But they mm -hmm. didn't because politically it was not fitting the formula. But that's politic talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, 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 no, but very, was, very... Yeah. Very, yeah, but very I always important. say I'm not talking about politics. It just somehow it goes there because it is politically charged message yes. in some ways, even though it's a story of refugees. But the message is very um, political because it's the biggest refugee population since World War II uh, we are having. And, uh, and the coronavirus on top of it, millions mm. and millions are dying the refugees around the world on these borders because they are nameless, um, countryless, homeless. They don't count the statistics and numbers of how many people are dying from this disease as far as refugees are concerned. So it is with the disease, with the refuge that is happening, with the wars that is happening in our world, I think it's a, it's a huge, huge political dilemma for the world, how we deal with this. Very much so, Sonia. I mean, this is the um, leading us into the central theme of your film, which uh, which you entitled I Am You. And I think you're you're alluding to that um, feeling that I that it evoked in me that we we have to be able to relate. Um, this could be any one of us just by you know, the, the grace of God that we're not a refugee. Yeah. But, but your film really shows us that journey from a very emotional and deep place and real, almost realistic uh, in that, that elicits that, you know, um, sense of compassion and sense of understanding of what it is to be a refugee and what that, you know, disregard for human life could be. Um, Specifically, why somebody becomes a refugee is what this film shows. Because people think, you know, they want to come to America because they just like America. Well, no, that's that's migration. Mm -hmm. People say, I don't like the system of education in my country. I don't like the, the way mm -hmm. politics are in my country. I would rather go to a free country that the essence of democracy is really practiced, like United States of America, blah, blah, blah. That's migration. Refugees leave because bombs are dropping. There is a hundred percent chance they're going to die, and they take a five percent chance that they may live. And through this journey, you see what they go through. Very harrowing. And this is journey. like the best way. This yes. is the best way because they have these people in between that they pay and pay and pay, and they have a way to get from one country to another. Imagine the true refugees that they don't have a dime, they're in a village and bombs are dropping and they're just running across the borders, how yes. they are doing. It's a very courageous uh, telling of a story. And I know I know you shot some of it, IMU, in Afghanistan, but some of it you also shot in Turkey. Yeah. And I, I wonder how 
uh, that transition was for you. And and then maybe you could talk to us a little bit of just about the casting process to, to bring people into the film and work with these actors in these different locations. Absolutely. So, um, as you know, I shot I uh, the Black Tulip entirely yes. in Afghanistan, and I was there for four and a half months. I got kid kidnapped, I got tortured, a lot of bad things happened to me because it was the height of the Taliban, and I was making a movie against the Taliban. I was shooting it all over Afghanistan. They would find out where I am, they threatening phone calls. It was, swear to God, hell wow. on earth. That's why I wrote the book. The book, uh, Will I Live Tomorrow, is just that. From the day I arrive until the day I leave, what happens to me in Afghanistan? I literally felt like I aged a good 10 years in that time. First, being a woman, mm -hmm. <laughs> filmmaker, which women are not even allowed to walk with a, without a burqa uh, or without a man holding their hand. Woman boss, 123 crew members, security, all these people that supposed to as part of production and trying to shoot a movie in the middle of war and the middle of election. It was the only time that the United Nation left Afghanistan was during the shooting of the Black Tulip. And then there was a lot of threats on my life and I was really scared to shoot this film back in Afghanistan because of I can the imagine. trauma. I'm still scared of helicopters yeah. coming. I literally have to cover my ears because I start shaking. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, what's it called? This P PS P PTSD. PTSD yes. PD. Yeah. yes. And uh, so this time I really didn't want to take that chance of going there and definitely knowing that I might get killed. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Turkey is very similar to Afghanistan. You know, it's Islamic country. The lighting is exactly like the lighting in Afghanistan, which is really important for a filmmaker to get the kind of lighting um, that represents the, the country of origin. But the film is not all about uh, Afghanistan. It's, it, it starts in Afghanistan, but it's a story of a refugee, refugees, a young man, an old man, a pregnant doctor, all Afghans, that they go from Afghanistan to Iran, from Iran to uh, Turkey, from Turkey to Greece and Greece to Munich. So I, even if I wanted to, I couldn't <laughs> shoot in Afghanistan. We don't have a boat or an uh, ocean to put people yeah. in. So the, the, the portion that I shot in Afghanistan was very important to me, but I really sneaked in and it was very Small. different this time. Mm -hmm. I didn't land mm -hmm. at the airport. <laughs> uh, so in Turkey, um, there was a massive language barrier. I speak both languages of my country, Pashto, a little bit, but my daddy is, I read, write, and speak very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, Turkish, I don't speak. Mm -hmm. So I talk about casting. It's like fascinating casting, this film. I wanted all Afghan actors, so I got a couple of them that were brave enough to come to Turkey because you just don't know what's the political situation in Afghanistan. The visas mm -hmm. are very difficult. They, you know, you need to guarantee, send them a passport, guarantee them a job, guarantee the day they're coming, the day they're leaving, have to, they have to have the return ticket. It's very complicated. But the women were um, definitely scared to come to uh, Turkey, understandably so, because eventually they have to go back. The film is not uh, it's again against ISIS and Taliban, so I didn't want them to feel vulnerable. And I asked them, do you feel comfortable? Send them the script. This is the situation. They felt that the men felt comfortable, the women didn't. Then I ended up with having a casting director in Turkey, in Istanbul, and trying to get Turkish actor to speak English, so at least as a director, I can tell him what I want, and then speak in Dari. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. It was really the most challenging part of this whole festival, uh, the festival, this whole um, uh, project, this whole film was the language barrier that we all had. Really wow. difficult. The actors were amazing, but it's so hard as an actor 
to, because the actor wants to give you exactly what you want. And their English is broken. We mm -hmm. have a translator that is Turkish, is speaking in English with me, translating mm -hmm. them in Turkish. And I'm like, did you say exactly what I wanted them to do? <laughs> and they're like, Sonia, it's so hard. Then they have to come with different language. And I'm enunciating every word to them, enunciating. No, 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 you can't say it because that's not authentic. I can speak like that. Mm -hmm. It was very hard, very hard. But we managed because it, it flows. And uh, you not speaking Dari, you will never know. Maybe some Afghans will hear the accent a little bit. But I think I'm forgiven because, uh, you know, it was the best we could all possibly do with it in that sense. But most of the people that are watching it, they're, watch they're reading the English subtitle anyways. And then they're speaking English when they are traveling to every country. It's authentic to each country they're traveling in. So, Very interesting. It's a yeah. huge topic in today's... Um, cinema world, especially international cinema with, you know, dialects and nuances. And I think, uh, you know, the challenge of the real challenge of using cast internationally and working as you have is incredible. And so bravo to you for pulling that Thank off. Thank you. We, I, I will not do that again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm making I, a I was, Hollywood movie with big movie stars. They all speak English and I think my English is good. They will hear me. They will understand me. It's, right. it's tough in so many ways as a woman. I mean, even Turkey, I have to be honest, it's not uh, very, it's not the, the Turkey we used to know. Uh, the, it's very harsh on women. Women are scared again. Women are different in Turkey. As, uh, it's not as free as it used to be. It was one of the Islamic countries that was actually practicing the essence of Islam by being respectful and all that, yet civilized and you know, it was a, one of the most civilized Islamic countries. I didn't feel very um, comfortable as a woman in, in Turkey shooting either, though my crew was one of the best crew ever. I loved them. They mm -hmm. had worked on Argo, the movie Argo, so it was a, pretty much a lot of the cast, uh, the yeah, Kassam cast crew of the, the movie Argo, the cinematographer, Gokhan Teriyaki, has won so many awards. He was very special. Alex Sutherland, the producer who's, who produced the Argo. My first AD was Argo, uh, Ben's AD, Ben Affleck's AD. So I got really lucky in that department, um, which would have been hard to find in Afghanistan unless you fly them there. And who wants to go to Afghanistan? Last time they all had hell. So I don't think I could have talked anybody to go back to Afghanistan. Oh, well, it sounds like you had some really great uh, key creative people uh, very, working with you. In, very. In I will work with them again and again. I was in the crew a, and very professional crew. Yes, very. and 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 that comes out, you know, in in the filmmaking. Yeah, you um, see it. It looks like a yeah. huge picture because of the quality. Yeah, right. Um, Shala was asking a question about the journey in the script, um, which takes. The, the lead characters into some very harrowing situations. And I guess we wondered what what inspired that? Um, was it a well, real this, situation or was it just, you know, something that you wanted to add to the film to to highlight how how difficult this journey can be and how people people take advantage of people? It's a true story, you know that. Mm. This is a true story that a guy wrote to me, a young boy wrote to me on Facebook and said, this is what happened to me. And wow. I was doing another movie that is called Behind the Facade, shooting it in Capri, Italy with movie stars. And I heard this, I'm like, I'm going back to war zone <laughs> because that's, I'm scared of roller coaster, all kinds of things. Like right now I'm terrified of the disease. I'm very careful with everything, but going to war zone for some reason gets my heart excited and it's like I love it I love to be a part of something that is happening live uh, and there is an energy in war zones that is very powerful you see historian you see writers you see poets you see fighters you see all kinds of people there at that moment and everybody is extremely alive because a bomb could drop in this could be your last meal your last moment on earth. There is something beautiful about, I've never felt so alive as when I'm feeling 
that any minute I could die. It's it's any definitely a, a, it's definitely like a, a cutting edge moment, Sonia. Yes, <laughs> yes. If we will call it that. Yes. You know? Yeah. And you're capturing so, yeah. something that is special because you could not do it. Everybody is ready to give you their all because uh, they just don't know what tomorrow is or next minute is. And bombs were dropping right and left around us. How we escaped, how United Nations closed United Nations in Afghanistan completely. Um, and what do you, I mean, when you, when you were thinking about the journey of this film, I Am You, um, which I hope everyone goes out to see now, uh, in the Misa. Inshallah, we're going to get it in theaters soon. As soon yeah. as it opens, we are negotiating a distribution deal with it too. We're just waiting for the Academy Awards from Afghanistan to make it the official submission to the Academy. Okay. Because as you can understand, our country is, my country is extremely corrupt. So <laughs> nothing is easy to get uh, done, but we're hoping that um, they can get their act together and we can have the film at the Academy Awards. And right after that, I am working on distribution and all that. So we, so like you said, hopefully everybody will get to see it. Well, I know we, we this is part of our job as film festivals, you know, to sort of uh, show and profile films that are new, that take a different perspective and that... Um, may have a shot at, at finding a new audience in North America that they would normally find. And so a number of films that have passed through MESAF and festivals have gone on to be their, their country's Oscar nomination. Um, I think Shala has the inside edge on one of those titles that's coming to MESAF. But I wonder if you have, um, you know, you talked a lot about women and filmmaking and the challenge of being a female filmmaker. And I wonder if you have any you know, tips for other female filmmakers now that you've um, accomplished what I think is quite a repertoire of a voice and of cinema that you're creating for Afghan uh, cinema. And it just, it doesn't have to be specific to Afghanistan. Um, yeah, I do. You know, as filmmakers, we think like you have to have everything together to do something. Otherwise, you just, you will not succeed. I believe like if you really have passion and you believe in what you're doing, I, I don't think any filmmaker has any business making movies about things they don't know about. <laughs> I think you should know what the subject really well. Being a refugee myself, you were talking about Masood. I, I do this boy that sends me his story. I know his heart. I know I know what it's like to leave your country and come to a strange country and why you leave your culture, your people, your family, your food. I mean, everything in our own country, in our own language is beautiful. No matter how poor we are, we need to be around our own people, our own language. To leave all that is really hard. And then to go through what they go through in this journey, I mean, from rape to torture to boat ride that kills a lot of people happens to them and this is in the best of situations and and you see who survives and who doesn't survive and when you do survive is it worth it at the end of the day you know what what kind of shell of a person have you become by the end of that which you were talking about the Germany, the, uh, yeah, the immigration. I didn't want to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the immigration in Germany, it yeah. just says volumes because it is like, whoa, it w I'm here now. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, yeah. it's, 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 uh, uh, to get back to your question, I think uh, finally uh, in America, in Hollywood, I should say, it's become about women and women of minority and women of filmmakers because we have a certain point of view as women that men will never have. Same way that we could never have their point of view when they're doing an action scene, you know, or any kind of um, manly thing that they do. But we have a sense of sensibility uh, that is very different 
we bring a message to Hollywood, to the world, that comes from a very uh, soft, yet so hard, because we've gone through so much, yet we are still women, we're fe feminine, and our softness shows up too. And this is how you touch people's heart. That's how people relate to you. And don't forget, more than 50% of the population of the world mm -hmm. are women watching movies, and they want to relate to it. I have been extremely lucky and very fortunate that the, my documentary, The Breadwinner, did extremely well. And then with the Black Tulip getting to the Academy Awards was really a big deal. And how I got to the Golden Globes this year, you know, they really loved the film. It's all these things. When you look at these situations that happen to you, it shows you that you matter and they care about you, Hollywood, even though you are a woman and you speak with an accent, not quite the Americano, the typical women. And uh, they are really nurturing women like me. So to women filmmakers, don't ever give up. Keep fighting. Believe in yourself. Always believe in yourself. And you back your own back. Seriously. I've never had a somebody telling me, oh, you just go do that. You you become a director. I'll help you on the way. I No agent, no manager, nobody did anything for me. I created my own projects. I went and did them. I took all the risk myself. Um, I, I sold whatever I could to just be able to do it. Then in, in between all that, these amazing people that believe in your vision and they go, I'm going to invest in you. Go make it. But it doesn't happen without passion, without truly believing in yourself. Because the moment you question, everybody else is going to question you. You have to know what, why you're doing it, how bad you're going to do it. Are you willing to die for it? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go. And then passion is contagious. Wow, well, those are fear. really, really, yeah. really powerful words for all those women filmmakers out there who uh, wonder if they can actually make it happen. And so you're quite a shining example for them, Sonia. Um, we can all do anything and everything, you know. When I see the women in my country writing to me, I get a lot of emails like, you know, I wish I could do what you do. I really want to be an actress or I want to do this. I want to do that. I want, it, I want them to know that they can. They absolutely can. Take your little phone. Everybody has a phone now. Just make a little story, a short story of two minutes. Have a beginning, a middle, and end, and just go shoot it. Don't worry about the right time and the right thing and the freedom and all that. Just keep going and don't let anybody suppress you that you can't. I hate the word you can't and no. Everything to me is a yes. You tell me 10 times no, that's 20 yes to me. I just hear yes. I, I, like, I like that attitude. I like, we like that. I like that attitude. <laughs> and, Sonia, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Sonia, I, I heard somewhere that uh, you became passionate in filmmaking oh, or man. the seed started when you watched a John Wayne movie with your father. father. Yes. And you told him that the, the door should have opened on the other side and the horse yes. would have come through there. Oh, like, that's right? so funny. I um, saw a, a Western John Wayne movie with my father in Cinema Ariana in Kabul. My father's a diplomat. We, t we lived out outside in Europe a lot, but we were in Afghanistan from time to time. And I, it was a Thursday afternoon. My father comes to work early because, you know, we have Thursday half a day and uh, Friday off. And he, he said, let's go to the theater, I'm seeing the cow, this Western movie, John Wayne. And, bar and all that stuff going on, drinking. Uh, the movie was finished. I, I was about um, 11 or so. And my father said, so what did you think of the film? And I said, OK, so I got to tell you something. I said, you know when the, the, the two door opens that slams back and forth and the horse is there? So why did he have to go around to jump on the horse? This guy almost killed him with his gun. 
the horse should have been this way so he could have jumped on it and <laughs> took off. And my father said, what? <laughs> he, he really, he was asking me how did I like the movie, but I was directing and writing it. And I didn't know what directing was at the time, but that's, I was, I really wanted to make movies. And mm. my life became about something else. I became a refugee. I started my foundation, Afghanistan World Foundation, uh, Dr. Kissinger, and start helping the refugees of Afghanistan, start testifying in front of the Senate, getting the singer Mr. Lepku for Afghanistan. And my movie dream went down and down. Then I got married, had a baby. It was like, oh my God, what about my dream? <laughs> and then I started, uh, I went to Afghanistan to for, for nonprofit work and I saw a boy selling newspapers um, and calendars on the streets of Kabul and jumping up and down because he was so little that he couldn't even be up by the window. And this boy just touched my heart and I found him and I just shot a day in his life for mm -hmm. my foundation. And that was the breadwinner that everybody went crazy. Like, oh my God, I, I showed it in the Senate and the Congress and 53 senators showed up and Diane Feinstein came to me and he goes, Sonia, this is the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> thank you. And he says, we're going to give money to humanitarian causes to Afghanistan. It brought millions of dollars in humanitarian help for the people of Afghanistan. I, then I realized the power of film, moving pictures. It's so incredible because I could give speeches until I am dead and makes no difference. People just like, oh, okay. But when you show, mm -hmm. when you show, and it's a, it's an incredible medium film. It really is. It's quite transformative. I it is. completely and agree. It's a dark place and mm -hmm. you don't have your phone on and you are just focusing on one thing. Tell me one other medium that we can do that today. There is nothing we can do that today. The theater is the place to just check out and, 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 see something and go to another world. And I love opening windows to the world you've never seen before to, you know, or you have an imagination of it, but you don't know anything about it. That's the power of film. It's just opening these windows like, wow, that's Afghanistan, you know, and that's an Afghan women. It's not all under burqas and men with gun on their hands. They're, they have babies that go to school. They have breakfast like us. So it brings compassion, it brings love and understanding of those people supposedly that they right. think about are. I and mean, the, and the food's delicious, Sonia. <laughs> oh, the food is amazing. Afghan yeah. food, last night I found a photo of kebab being actually, not photo, a video of kebab with the onions, with the uh, roasted uh, green peppers sizzling. I send that photo to my auntie. I said, I am dying. I just want some of this food. <laughs> well, so, I, I wonder. So delicious. I, yeah. yeah, I love Afghan food. It's the best food actually for me. Yeah. And then second is Indian food. I love Indian. So Sonia, um, you've now made the transition. Your, your, your first films were more documentary based and, and you've moved into narrative uh, fiction now. So we, we are really excited to see what happens next for you. And we would like to know if, if you can share with us any, any new projects or any things that are Absolutely. going to happen. And, and in the context of COVID, obviously what you might think about that. Well, that's the best part of COVID. I have to be honest with you. Uh, I, I have accomplished so much creatively during this year mm -hmm. that probably would have taken me three or four years to, to get where, to accomplish all the stuff that I've done because of the free time mm -hmm. and the free time of Hollywood mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can actually pick up the phone and call somebody. It's like, yeah, tell me about your story. What are you doing? It's nice because people are so busy uh, normally and you right. cannot really talk about projects and do things fast. So um, I came across a, a, a true story in a high rise in New York that mm -hmm. happened between a man and a woman that absolutely hated each other because of construction and this high rise. This man was just torturing her with the construction. She never met him, but for years he's been mm -hmm. doing construction. 
And then they meet through COVID and they madly fall in love. Wow. <laughs> so it's a romantic comedy. I really think it's going to be a great for Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. So that's the goal is. The script is um, on a second draft or should have in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to start sending it to Hollywood. So I'm very excited about that. I mean, it's going to be my first Hollywood movie. And it's going to be so shot in one high rise building. It's going to be cool. Um, and I am preparing a series about uh, immigration, uh, an immigration officer in America. And every segment of this series is like the night off. I don't know if you've seen it on HBO. I, have. I do something like that, that yeah. shows uh, people, young, old men, women, uh, coming from different parts of the world. See, this, this one is coming from Ukraine. Another one is coming from Pakistan. Why they, we show why they're coming, how right. hard it is to get the visa and what happens at the immigration. Right. And the actual stories in America about this immigration officer and um, a Somalian boyfriend that he has and that she has, she's Mexican maid. She was a Mexican maid. Her dream was to become a citizen and be an immigration officer. She becomes that pregnant with his baby and he is illegal. So it's just so the story stays the same and moves on, but every day we have a story about immigration uh, office and who is legal and who is illegal and who um, um, takes the right, the, 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 what is it called, the, the chance, uh, the chance to leave or the chance to kick them out or keep them in America. Mm. So I feel like this concept is a is a concept that we need right now in our world because uh, it's a whole other understanding is what it's like coming to America, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not just as lovely as everybody think it is. You know, it's very hard even when you come legally. But God forbid if you come illegally, what happens to you and and all that. So oh, I yeah. am doing an expose kind of show of that. And on the other side, different countries, different stories. Yeah. Now, Anya knows I've told her stories even when I became Canadian and I had to visit uh, America. And even though I studied in America, and I've shared my stories with Anya. So she Maybe knows. Maybe you should share it with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to talk all the time with you, Sonia. We could go on because as, as women from different backgrounds, uh, we share a lot uh, uh, with you and we support you and it resonates with us and we want to know how much uh, we want to tell you how much we loved your film. Um, I thank you and, so much. Yes. And we wish you the best with that journey. And for everybody listening, MISAF is continuing from uh, December 4th. We started all the way to the 12th on the TIFF digital platform. Please uh, get a ticket now and um, go see IMU and I'm getting some tips from someone about selecting stars. I'm not quite sure what that means, <laughs> but but anything um, is possible. Just believe and go for it. Why not? Yes, I think um, you know we 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 often we have a MISAF star. Actually, I should tell you very quickly. Her name's Mega Sandu. She's lovely, and she is um, with the union here in Toronto ACTRA, our national union is ACTRA. And so we're profiling me staff as well. So we're, we're always looking for new ways to connect people. And Absolutely, that's, that's you're, the best way. That's film yeah, business, you know? That's it's all right. about connection. It's all about believing in somebody. And you know, you see that Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese became a partner for life with one movie. They just I know. do everything together. I am interviewing uh, an incredible, incredible uh, Hollywood producer uh, for Harvard Business Club on the 15th. Excellent. And uh, he is a legend in Hollywood and, and he works only with Ron Howard, mm. only with Ron Howard. That's all Ron Howard movies. So it's very interesting how this kind of community exists within Hollywood. Um, 
and and festivals are the best friends of filmmakers. So I am very grateful and thankful cool. to very you good. guys for taking volunteering you. your times to do something so noble in helping filmmakers and and in that process you're film you're helping art. You know, to filmmaking is an art form. Absolutely. Yeah. We totally want to make sure we can preserve this light that you have shared with us and all the filmmakers um, by keeping me staff alive and and supporting all our 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 film festival uh, partners and the wider network that we've created. So thank you so much, Sonia, for joining us today. Thank you, Bo. Thank, thank you, Shella. Thank you very, thank very much. Thank you for being with and us. I, I guess Khan is coming back. I will thank him personally. Yeah. Yes, I should, should be joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. So much to say, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, when it opens, we would, we would love for you to come to Canada and especially to Mississauga. I would love to. I honestly would love to. Next year, God willing, everything God will willing, be okay inshallah. with this uh, disease and control. I would love to come. I would love to come. Actually, I want to shoot something there. Oh, so I want to I come. Bravo. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Khan, how are you? Arshida's back. Where's Rakshan? I think he's on mute. I think we are. We've got. No, you have. He was waiting for you to say bye and finish the. <laughs> Good bye. bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that was so, so funny. Technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>